Hi, everyone. I would like to welcome you to this week's edition of Extracellular Vesicle Club. EV Club was developed by Ken, but has now grown into an event of the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles, also known as ICEF. My name is Mitka Lenassi, and I will be your host for today. And now it is really my great pleasure to welcome our speaker, Masa Sumia from the Sanken Osaka University, but who is currently visiting Neil King's lab at University of Washington. Masa is interested in the use of biological nan nanomaterials like viruses and extracellular vesicles for drug delivery. And today he will talk about the tool he developed to verify EV mediated functional delivery of messenger RNA. Really looking forward to learn more about that. I encourage everyone to place any comments or questions in the chat box during the talk, and it will be possible to unmute yourself at the end and ask some of those questions in person. Due to the recent video disruptions, um, we had to um, disable the screen sharing for all participants. Sorry for that. And now over to you, Masa. Please, you can share your screen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Masa Arsomia, and today I'm going to talk about the, our recent uh, bioassay to verify EV mediated functional messenger RNA delivery using RNA editing technology. And today's talk will be uh, solely based on our recent preprints uh, published earlier this year. So if you are interested in and you want to uh, check the detailed methods, please read this preprint. And actually, I talked about this topic in last ISEM meeting, chaired by NECTA. So um, I hope you can enjoy this talk. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about some backgrounds, knowns and unknowns of EV mediated cargo delivery. And I'm going to talk about EV mediated messenger and transfer between cells. And last part, I'm going to talk about our own work, RNA editing based reporter assay for EV mediated messenger RNA transfer. So, um, as you all may know, EV is probably capable to deliver their cargo because they have a lot of uh, biological uh, cargo, like proteins, nucleic acid, lipids, and other metabolites. And here you can see a putative uh, delivery mechanisms of EVs. And I believe the endocytosis is the main pathway for internalization of EVs. And after that, probably the, these vesicles fuse with the membranes and release the cargo into the cytoplasm. And lots of studies demonstrated the EV mediated cargo transfer from donor cells to the recipient cells. And if EVs release their cargo into the cytoplasm, the, the membrane fusion event must take place. And here you can see the, the, the membrane fusion process. And usually the two other two different membranes never fuse because of the, the, the high energies required for membrane fusion process. Lipid bilayers are uh, stable structure so the the membrane fusion requires really high energy so the, usually the membrane fusion must be uh, mass required fusion proteins to overcome the energy barrier and if, if you think about the viruses they have a membrane fusion protein to achieve membrane fusion and infection hiv has gp120 and gp41 and influenza virus has HDA proteins for membrane fusion. After the receptor binding, they undergo the, the extensive structural change and fuse to different membranes. And finally, release their uh, genome into the cytoplasm. So this is a well-known and well-established pathways for uh, viral entry into the cells. And we still don't know whether EVs have such membrane fusion protein on their surface, and we still don't know whether the, the EVs have fusiogenic mechanisms. So 
So the, the unknown in EV field is that the EVs deliver their cargo into the recipient cells. And we don't know whether any membrane fusion protein exists on EVs. And if EV cargo transfer hypo hypothesis is true, what is the mechanism and efficiency? These are still open questions. And to understand the EV cargo delivery process, luckily we have some bioassays to assess the, the, the intracellular uh, pathway of EVs. For endocytosis and intracellular trafficking, we can do uh, fluorescence labeling or using fusion proteins or even immunostaining to see to observe the internalization and the intracellular localization of EVs inside a cell. And as a downstream, after the EV treatment, we can measure the, the gene expression change or phenotypic change of the recipient cell by using reported assays or other bioassays. But still, we don't have a good assay to assess the membrane fusion of EVs to capture, uh, to directly capture the cargo release process EVs in, in the cell. And I believe the quantitative functional assay is critical to understand the cargo delivery process of EVs. And the functional assay must reflect the membrane fusion process of the cargo delivery because this step is critical to release the cargo into the cytoplasm. The assay should direct measure the, the amount of cargo in the cytoplasm of recipient cells. And most critically, the functional assay must generate a specific readout upon cargo delivery because there are a lot of artifacts or confounding factors that affect your readout. So these are the critical fact, a critical uh, criteria to establish a good biosafe for EV cargo delivery. To fulfill these criteria, uh, we have been working on uh, the assay development for EV cargo delivery. One example here is that is the real-time luminescence assay for cargo delivery. In this work, we utilize nanobit system, which has two components. One component is high bit tag, which has 11 amino acid a short peptide tag. And another component is large bit, which is 18 kilodalton protein. And they can form spontaneously uh, they can form a complex spontaneously and restore the uh, luciferase activity. So we put high bit tag in the protein cargo of EVs. So in this assay, only after the cargo delivery into the cytoplasms, they can form a complex with large bit and induce the, the luminescence signal in the cells. So this is basically a real time uh, luminescence assay to measure cytoplasmic cargo delivery. And this, work, this system works pretty well. If the EVs have VSVG, which is a viral glycoprotein for membrane fusion, they can release the cargo and induce the luminescence signal in the recipient cell. And you can see here, after like 10 to 15 minutes, the signals gradually increase over time. But in the absence of VSVG, they couldn't induce any luminescence signal suggesting that uh, EVs have a uh, very low uh, cargo delivery efficiency, at least below the detection limit of this assay. So this system is really useful to uh, quantitatively study the cargo delivery efficiency of EVs. And another assay we developed is the reportogen assay for membrane fusion. So we engineered EVs to encapsulate a transcriptional activator. So after the endocytosis and fusion, they can release the transcription activ activator into the cytoplasms. And after the nuclear transport, they can induce the reportogen expression in the recipient cells. By using this bioassay, we again observe that in the, in the presence of VSVG in, on EVs, we saw a dramatic increase of reportogen expression in the recipient cell. But 
when we put some mutation in the VSVG to deplete the physiogenic activity, we couldn't see any increase of reportogen assay, as well as without VSVG condition. So together with these observations, I think the membrane fusion activity of EVs is quite low. And this result was supported by other group. Uh, in this beautiful paper published in PLOS Genetics, uh, they developed their own unique uh, membrane fusion assays. And they collected EVs from five different donor cell lines and treat uh, 17 different recipient cell lines with these EVs. And I was surprised that they use total 170 combination for this assay. And they found that without VSVG expression of donor cells, they couldn't see any uh, cargo delivery in the recipient cells. On the other hand, if they have VSVG on EVs, they can um, actually saw the dramatic increase of uh, reportogenic expression in the recipient cell. So I think together with this result, um, the membrane fusion activity of EVs and cargo delivery efficiency of EVs are quite low. So I'm going to talk about the, I'm going to focus on messenger net transfer between cells. So my question here is that the, do EVs deliver messenger RNA cargo into the cytoplasm or recipient cell? And plenty of studies support that EVs contain messenger RNA in their uh, luminal space. And to study the messenger RNA transfer EVs, probably reporter assay is the best choice to uh, quantitatively assess the messenger RNA transfer because it's easy to measure the uh, reporter gene uh, activity in the recipient cell. But one major caveat of reporter assay is that reporter proteins, not the messenger RNA, potentially contaminate EV fraction. I will talk about this point in more detail. And you would expect that it, the conventional messenger RNA delivery assays like this, Donor cells express the messenger RNA of interest or a reportogen, reportogen messenger RNA. And you would expect that EVs secreted from donor cells contain a reporter messenger RNA. So after the uptake into the recipient cells and, and after the release of messenger RNA into the cytoplasms, they can be translated to the reporter proteins and you would measure the activity of these reporter proteins. That makes sense and it seems working, but the reality is like this. Donor cells also express reporter proteins from donor cells. And these proteins can be contaminated, uh, these reporter protein can contaminate the EV fraction even after the purification. And these free proteins are also capable to internalize into cells. So in the recipient cell, there are, there are two possibility of reportaging activity. One is from messenger RNA translation, and this is authentic messenger RNA delivery. On the other hand, they also have a protein transfer, which is sometimes called pseudo transfer. So because of this pseudo transfer, we can potentially overestimate the messenger RNA delivery efficiency because of these contamination. And this is one example of our own experiment. Um, in this assay, we wanted to measure the messenger RNA transfer from donor cells to the recipient cell. And we use a HEC293 T cell as a model in this case. And we transfected the 293 T cells with the uh, nanolosh phrase expression. And after the collection of supernatant, we put these uh, EV containing supernatant to the recipient cells and measure the nanolook activity in those cells. As you can see here, you see the, the really good signal from the recipient cell when EVs have VSVG and nanolook expression. And it looks good because 
you would expect that messenger RNAs are transferred from donor cell to the recipient cell. But this is not true. Because when we measure the nanolook activity in the supernatant or uh, autocentrifugation isolated EVs, we saw a strong signal from these fractions, even after the purification. As you can see here, in the condition medium, there are a lot of uh, nanolook activity. And even after the autocentrifugation purification, there are a substantial uh, luminescence signal. And when you compare to the PBS, there's a no signal here. So these signals are substantial. And probably these activity uh, leads to the overestimation of uh, nanolook activity in the recipient cell. And actually, we measure the nanolook activity in the recipient cell. And in this experiment, we transfected the recipient cell with a siRNA targeting nanolook to block the messenger RNA activity in the recipient cell. So I expected that if messenger RNA are actually transferred to the recipient cells, uh, siRNA treatment suppressed the expression of uh, repodogene. But as you can see here, the siRNA treatment compared to the control didn't change anything, suggesting that these signal in the recipient cells are exclusively from coming from uh, proteins, not the messenger RNAs. So this is now clear that in some experiments, uh, proteins, protein contamination leads to the overestimation of messenger RNA delivery. And I should emphasize that overexpressed over protein in donor cells can be contaminated in supernatant and even after the purification. Uh, in the uh, EV production, you could probably have a protein contamination from donor cells. And these proteins probably affect your assay readout. And siRNA knockdown is very useful and easy to distinguish authentic messenger RNA delivery from artificial protein delivery. So now I'm moving on to my own um, project. So as I mentioned before, the, the conventional messenger RNA could not remove the possibility of report a protein transfer. So, so I think we should probably inactivate messenger RNA activity in the donor cells and again activate the messenger RNA activity inside only inside the recipient cells. So here, this is how we did to achieve the goal. We put a stop codon in the, the reporter messenger RNA so that they couldn't express the protein in donor cells. And only after the transfer of messenger RNA into the cytoplasm recipient cells, the RNA editing enzyme, in this case, uh, bcas 13 b adar 2 fusion protein, together with guide RNA, they can edit the stop codon to the functional codon. And they can, um, after that, messenger RNA can translate the functional protein. So in this assay, the messenger RNA are inactivated in donor cells and again activated by RNA editing enzymes only in recipient cell. So this is the, the, the exact um, conditions for this assay. We put a UAG codon, stop codon in a 12 amino acid of nanolucleophiles, and only after the RNA editing from A to G, this codon become functionally uh, encoded uh, tryptophan amino acid. So we, we first tested whether this actually worked in the cells. So we transfected hectonate to the T cell with a nanolook wild type or a W12 stop codon with bcas 13 b which is a RNA editing enzyme and guide RNA for targeting specific sequence of those stop codons. As you can see here, the wild type nanolucleophiles are constitutively active in the cells. So there's no a change between uh, 
target guide RNA and control guide RNA. But in the case of nanoloc W12 stop a reporter gene, in the control, there was almost no activity in the luciferase activity in the, uh, in the cell. But with the treatment with uh, target guide RNA, there was almost thousandfold increase of nanoluciferase activity in the cell, suggesting that this system actually work to restore the nanoluc activity in the cell by RNA editing. So we utilize the RNA editing technology to uh, the messenger RNA delivery assay. And we transplanted the donor 293 T cells with nanoloc wild type or uh, W12 stop with or without VSPG as a delivery enhancer. And also we transplanted the recipient 293 T cells with our RNA editing enzyme and guide RNA. And we collected the supernatant. And in this case, we put the supernatant without any purification to the recipient cell. As you can see here, as I mentioned before, when we use a wide type nanoluxuries as a reporter, there was a strong um, nanoluc activity in the recipient cell because of the protein transfer. But compared to this sample, when we transplant the donor cell with the W12 stop reporter gene, there was, there was almost 9,000 fold decrease of the signal, suggesting that this RNA editing technique actually decreased the, the background or uh, protein transfer to almost zero, zero level. And this is a control, which is the, the non-treatment of ED, like, under 10 as a RL, R, RLU. And in this sample also has under 10 RLU. So these are basically almost zero. So an inter interesting thing is here that even the presence of VSVG, no messenger RNA transfer was observed. So I think the messenger RNAs are not transferred from donor cell to the recipient cells. And protein transfer is the sole um, mechanism for uh, these wild type nanoluculturalized reporter. And I also check whether the SRNA treatment affect the assay readout. As, a, as you can see here, in the case of wild type, there was no change between uh, RNA, uh, SRNA treatment or control, suggesting that Again, this, these luciferase activities are from uh, protein transfer. And in the case of W12 stop nanoloc reporter, there's no change or even a very small change, but basically these are almost no activity. So there's almost no change. So I believe the combination of RNA editing and siRNA uh, transfection is very robust and and reliable technique to check whether your readout is actually coming from um, messenger RNA rather than protein transfer. So I demonstrated that even with the, with the uh, viral B fusion proteins, EVs couldn't achieve messenger RNA transfer. So is there any method to actually deliver RNA into the cytoplasm recipient cell by using EVs. And I found all the paper published in 1994, which demonstrated that the, the alpha virus replicon can be uh, secreted into extracellular space by a kind of extracellular vesicles. And they can, uh, they are, so-called infectious particles, and they can actually deliver alpha viral uh, self-replicating RNA into the cytoplasm. And the self-replicate uh, alpha virus replicon is about 11 uh, kill base, and they have four kinds of non-structured proteins of alpha virus. And under the subgenomic promoter, you can insert any genes of interest. 
for uh, the transfection or something. So I check whether this system also work in our system. So we transfected uh, alpha virus derived replicon RNA in the donor cells with or without uh, BSVG. And we collected the supernatant uh, with or without purification. We put EVs into the recipient cells and see whether they have a non-look activity after the RNA editing. And in this case, we use a control guide RNA to see the specific uh, sequence dependent RNA editing in the recipient cell. As you can see here, in the presence of VSVG, you can see the dramatic increase when the cells have a targeting guide RNA compared to the control. So this result suggested that replicant RNAs are actually delivered to the recipient cells. And only after the RNA editing, they can express the nanorushvase in the recipient cell. So I think this is the, one of the first demonstration of the real RNA transfer from donor cell to the recipient cell. And again, we check the RNA transfer by using siRNA knockdown technique. And as you can see here, compared to the control, we saw a dramatic decrease of nanonuclear activity when the cells are, are treated with uh, siRNA targeting nanonuclear phase. So this is the clear evidence of RNA translation inside the recipient cell. So this is my hypothesis. The, the canonical messenger RNAs are transcribed from genome or plasma DNA inside nucleus. And after the nuclear transport, nuclear, tra uh, nuclear export, these messenger RNAs are usually translated to the proteins. But for the, in the, in the EV transport context, these messenger RNAs must be sorted to the EV biogenesis pathway and even secreted outside of the vesicles. And I believe those steps are really ineffective. So this is one of the reasons why the canonical messenger RNAs or the authentic EVs cannot achieve the efficient messenger RNA delivery between cells. On the other hand, replicon RNAs are known to be self-replicated inside the in on the uh, surface of membrane, uh, cellular membranes. The self-replication of these RNAs take place inside a very unique budding structure on the membranes called the spherol. And this is the spherol structure by a trans, uh, transmission electron microscope. These uh, spherol structure are found on the surface of the membranes. So together with the surface expression of BSVG, those RNAs can be um, secreted into the extracellular space together with BSVG. So these particles can actually deliver RNA into the cytoplasm by the help of the physiogenic activity of BSVG. So here's my conclusion throughout my study. Um, RNA editing-based method can verify the authentic messenger RNA delivery by excluding artificial protein delivery. And I strongly su suggested to check whether your messenger RNA delivery is actually messenger RNA de delivery rather than protein delivery by using our RNA editing reporter system or even siRNA knockdown. Those methods are really useful and robust method. And I, I found that EVs containing replicon RNAs are potentially useful for RNA delivery application as a platform for uh, therapeutics or vaccines application. So again, those studies are already published as a preprint in bioarchive. So if you are interested in, please read our preprint. So I'd like to acknowledge my uh, founding, uh, founding sponsors and my colleagues in Corona Lab. And I'm really looking forward to see you all in 2023 in beautiful Seattle here. So thanks, thanks for your attention. 
Thank you, Masa. I think that I speak for everyone that this was an amazing example how to properly do functional assays with all the controls and then to see what's really happening. So the whole talk was very instructive and interesting. So thank you. And I already see some questions. So I will just um, let me just um, allow participants to unmute themselves. And let's just start with the questions from the, um, from the attendees, from the participants. So Philip, if you can unmute yourself. <clears throat> oh, great. Yes. This was a, a very crystal clear presentation of, as you said, uh, perfectly balanced and controlled uh, set of experiments. Um, my first question was about the introduction and, and maybe someone understands this better than I do. There are subpopulations of EVs that resist um, uh, uh, <clears throat> acid uh, digestion at the stomach uh, and uh, therefore should be resisting in phagolysosomes. And, and so that's another step that I don't understand is how uh, those uh, EVs are releasing if they're in an environment uh, in, in which they have, have resistance. That's one question. The other was, um, do you have anything to say with your technologies about miRNA uh, transfers from exosomes, which seems to be much more common uh, then claims for uh, mRNA transfers. So there's two very different points. You know, the first question, uh, I think uh, some ABs are actually resistant to this acidic condition. And I saw some papers using um, milk-derived ABs. Some of them are actually resistant against acidic condition. And I believe some EVs are uh, some EVs survive in the acidic or some uh, degrading condition inside endosomal lysosomes. But the, given the fact that the viruses, without uh, physiogenic activity, they couldn't infect cells. So if EVs survive in those uh, acidic conditions, they probably do nothing inside those uh, intracellular membranes, membrane compartment. So yeah, I agree with you that some EVs are resistant to the acidic condition, but I'm not sure that those EVs actually do something inside the cells. Well, and there are some, is, some systems which it appears that they are transferring um, microRNA, uh, but it's hard to understand uh, how that's being released in the phagolysosome. And yeah, compared to the messenger RNA, uh, microRNAs are small, so they could be potentially escaped from endosomes or phagolysosome to the cytoplasm. And I believe there must be some good assays to check whether those microRNAs are actually transferred to the cytoplasm. And, and I, I'm sure you will develop it if you have that. already. And my idea is to just de transfect the, the, the anti microRNA with a resistant cell to block the activity of microRNA activity in the, in the resistant cell. That would be the very simple and straightforward method, I guess. Yeah. So thank, so thank you. I actually have a follow-up question um, on the first question. Um, from, the, from the publication, it seems that um, EVs are mostly always internalized in the cells. If you, if you do the fluorescent microscopy assays and just look at internalization, it just, I mean, we even show that if you just have um, dye my cells, they, they get in, um, internalized the mm. same as EVs. So there seems to be this difference that there's a lot of internalization, but actually very little escape. How, how would you comment that? I mean, did you see something similar or? Because yes, in your uh, essay, it seems like, you know, that very little comes out from these EVs that are internalized. Yeah, we always saw internalization, but internalization is not equal 
to the function yes. delivery. So we should be really careful about these, you know, the experimental observation of internalization from functional delivery. Yeah. This is a perfect, yeah, perfect comment. Okay, thank you. And Gu Ping Li has another question. So if you're still here, please unmute yourself. Hey, uh, this is Gu Ping. Yeah, very nice talk. I think I just want to have like confirm with you if without a VSVG analog protein, if there's no, almost no functional delivery of the target protein in your resistance cell. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, this is the kind of artifact because we engineer AVs. Like uh-huh, okay. Yeah, I, I saw you engineer with CD81 that somehow, I don't know, may have some biases on the delivery itself. Uh, but with this strategy, you didn't see any delivery without VCVG, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, that's impressive. I didn't know that. but. Uh, the second question is, um, when you do the nano uh, lucifer's mRNA delivery, as I said, the function delivery is the K13 uh, engineer mach machinery, did you check the full length uh, mRNA of nano lucifer's in your EB sample? Uh, no, I haven't checked. And I think that's a little bit hard to to verify the full length, uh, the existence of mess, uh, full length messenger RNA inside EVs. Yeah, but uh, I think you have, because because it's rarely reported that the mRNA will, the full length mRNA will be in, embedded into EVs. So, so before you claim it's not functional delivery, I think, I think you have to have a quality control saying that the full length uh, mRNA is, is present, uh, presented inside the EV. Right. Yeah, I agree that. Um, yeah, at least the 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 amount of messenger RNA, full length uh, messenger RNA inside EVs are quite low, I believe. Yeah, but okay. I agree with you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, this was great. So from this, um, I would expect that if, um, let's say that we don't have to be worried that small EVs um, could fuse together, um, let's say during handling and when we handle biofluids. So do we have to be worried about fusion of EVs and changes in sizes? Mm. Based on your, I mean, based on what you show, it seems that they're quite resistant to fusion, to membrane fusion. I mean, during the preparation steps, yeah, yeah. There's a spontaneous fusion between EVs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't thought about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually the, the EVs are colloidal nanoparticles. They are relatively stable. So mm -hmm. I think that will be really rare. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is great to hear. And Elisa has another question. Hi, yeah, so I guess my question sort of relates to Guo Ping's in terms of the full length mRNA. Um, my understanding is that small EVs have very little full length mRNA and large EVs are more likely to have full length mRNA. So I guess I was just wondering, um, I missed the part where you talked about the size of your EVs. Are you looking at primarily small EVs, large EVs, a mixture? And I tested the supernatants and the, the purified EVs by auto centrifugation. So at least uh, in the supernatants, they, uh, they have all kinds of EVs, like small EVs and large EVs. And for the, the replicant RNA delivery, the, the vesicles have about 100 or 200 nanometer in size. But I didn't see any difference. I haven't checked any difference between uh, different size of EVs, but that would be interesting. Yeah, I agree with you. Larger EV potentially have uh, more messenger name because of the size. Yeah, it'd be a great use of those beautiful assays that you've developed. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and there is a question by Rene Dosan. Hi, yeah. I was just wondering how do you separate the potential for the mRNA to have been degraded once it is delivered to the recipient cells or 
I know for a lot of your experiments, you use TEC293 T cells, which express a lot of ADAR1 in the cytoplasm. So it could have even been hyper edited and therefore not expressed. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Yeah, actually, TEC293 T cells have endogenous uh, RNA editing enzymes. Mm -hmm. And so, so what was your question again? The other thing is, you know, there's the degradation machinery in the cytoplasm as well that could be targeting the mRNA upon receipt, you know, so it could be it could be delivered to the recipient cells, but then rapidly degraded before it oh, could yeah. be. Yeah, uh, I think that would be possible. Um, but if that's true, in either way, we couldn't see any delivery of messenger name by EV. So I think messenger name delivery at least is very low efficient process. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so um, maybe just another question. Um, okay, I, I lost the question now, but I'm gonna remember it. So maybe somebody else has a question. You can just um, raise your hand and um, I will just uh, unmute. Um, uh -huh, okay, I remember now. So I was just wondering, um, um, is it known if messenger RNA is internalized inside of EVIS or is it bound to the surface of EVIS? Would that be possible to actually be on the surface? Like it's now shown for DNA um, and I think also for micro RNA, but I'm not sure about that. But. I think the majority of messenger RNAs are inside EVs because if the messenger RNAs found on the surface of EVs, they are easily degraded by mm -hmm. the, the enzyme degradation outside of the cells. So they, they can be present on the surface, but mm -hmm. it's very hard to detect the surface mm -hmm. messenger RNA because of the degradation. Mm -hmm. So guess. probably they're not functional, right? I mean, they yeah. They can just be some remains. Yeah. Okay, that's excellent. So any any burning questions left? Well, with that last point, uh, we found the surface enzymatic experiment is problematic uh, because it also disturbs the biological function of the EVs. And, and so you don't know whether it's from the destruction of the surface uh, polymers or from a disturbing the function uh, of the EVs. So it, it's, it, it's not an adequate enough um, mm -hmm. protocol. You mean to do the treatment of RNAs or DNAs treatment and- Right, yes, okay. it, mm -hmm. it, it will mm -hmm. disappear, but, mm -hmm. but the function of the EV mm -hmm. in, in delivering the function mm -hmm. uh, is disturbed by mm -hmm. uh, this enzymatic treatment. Yeah, definitely. So, so that it's it's it, it, it's not an adequate uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the comment. Um, so, uh -huh. and uh, Berta, go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. So, you hear me? Yes, yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much for the talk. It's uh, amazing techniques. Um, and I have a question. So you show that the mRNA is barely uh, delivered. But what about, do you think that other things that are in the content of EVs, inside the EVs, are delivered? So there is this, um, let's say, this endosomal escape? Or do you oh, think yeah. that there is barely not endosomal escape and that's why the mRNA is not delivered? Yes, um, in the RNA editing method, we couldn't see any messenger RNA delivery. But in the previous studies of by ourselves, uh, we developed two different kinds of assays for, uh, for the CAG delivery and membrane fusion. And we couldn't see any membrane fusion and CAG uh, protein delivery. So I okay. believe, as well as messenger RNAs, any protein CAG or other CAG are barely delivered to the cytoplasm or a recipient cell. Okay, so the idea then is that it goes directly to the lysosome and it's degraded. So, or <laughs> yeah, or, I think yeah, majority you think... of the EVs are end up with the endosomal lysosomal degradation. Okay, so they 
not that useful, let's say, you know, that uh, in delivering, and unless there's a signaling at the at the membrane or something, that that the content of EVs will not matter that much, you no, know, then because it go, goes into degradation, or this is the idea. Yeah, I believe there is some room for improvement as a delivery vesicles because it is okay. clear that VSVG significantly enhances the delivery efficiency. So mm -hmm. if you have any member fusion machinery on the surface of the EVs, they can actually deliver. So okay. there must be some engineering approach to enhance the, the potential of EVs as a delivery vesicle. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, so it does seem that the fun maybe if the functions that we see that EVs have are also um, just signaling path um, activation of signaling pathways from the surface interaction. I mean, this is an interesting thought. And uh, Blanca has another question. Go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for this talk. This is very illuminating. Um, yeah, I was just wondering in relation to, to the discussion about surface, you know, associated molecules, and uh, you you showed that the proteins that are contaminating um, the signal are are they non associated, not associated to the EVs, or is that something you can't formulate, um, roll out at this stage, or are they just soluble proteins? Yes, um, I use EGFP or Nanoloop as a as a, a repotogene, mm -hmm. and those proteins are as green form, not the membrane bound form. So these are just okay. there as a soluble protein. So did you try to treat your samples with proteinase K, for instance, prior to then adding them the samples to the recipient? No, okay. because they could potentially uh, affect the functionality of EVs or surface BSVG of EVs. So I didn't try that. Okay, yeah, it would be kind of, you would have, kind of have to see if there's any targeted approach of just specifically um, degrading those proteins without affecting the VSVG. So I, I can see why that would be complicated. I was just wondering if that would be an easy solution um, in some instances, but thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I think that um, if there is no, no more burning questions. I think that we will stop for today. And I just want to thank you again, Masa. This was really a very interesting talk. Thank you for taking your time and sharing your work. And I hope that you have a smooth um, publishing of the paper. So not a lot of reviews, to, uh, uh, revisions to do and that we'll see the paper soon published um, in, in a good journal. So uh, good luck with that. And um, thank you all for joining us and see you next week with another um, interesting paper and interesting discussion. So thank you all and see you next week. Bye-bye.